Hello there, my fellow tribe members, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to The Tribe Must Survive, Episode 4, Research and Travel. Uh, let's go ahead and build the Tinkery, now that we have access to it. I'm going to build one here and here, either side of the Spirit Lodge. And the first person hired into the Tinkery was the Tinkerer, so that's good. And then the other person is the Hermit. Okay. The two uniquely named people just randomly selected for the Tinkery. So what ends up happening here is we'll start to generate research points from people working in the Tinkery. And what to research first. I could do Lumber Camp or Sharper Axes. So Sharper Axes increases the efficiency that our lumber workers work. We could also do Stone Pit Workers or more masons to collect stone quicker. Improve tools. Um, so improved tools makes more research for the tinkeries. Maybe I'll, I, rather than naming these literally, um, wood collection rate, more stone pit workers, improved research rate. Cause this is gonna be more um, sensible for you to understand or uh, faster medicine gathering. Or alternatively, I could um, save up for tier two, spending 135 to unlock tier two. If you don't think any of the tier one options are worth it. So there you go. Give you some minutes to vote on that. And as soon as it's uh, bright out, what I plan on doing, because we do have three people that are currently on assigned to work, what I plan on doing is to start to collect the yellow mushrooms that are here for medicine so that we can start to uh, build up progress for Servants of the Shepherd and then also um, build crop farms. So probably moving a lot of these strategic collection points that we have around the base and making sure that we have crop farms that are running because one of the benefits of act two is that we have more productive crop farms and they're cheaper to build so that's a really good way to get food as our community grows so particularly the light levels here i will put a crop farm here with plots around it holding shift for the multi-click and then putting someone to work in it. And I'll get another crop farm here. So you can see it's discounted. Like before the beacon cost 20, now it costs 18. Because it's uh, time to invest, reduce the cost. Maybe get rid of this lumber camp. Place it... Uh, no, I won't even rebuild it. Another crop farm here, and another crop farm there. One thing that you might note is I'm putting the crop farms within the illuminated circle of the inner fire, uh, so that crop farm workers could hypothetically work day and night. They're not res uh, restricted to just day daytime. And you guys want me to spend it in improve research rate. Copy that. Will do. I also want to get a second explore platform. So I'm going to just make it symmetrical with the other one. And this will help to increase the rate at which we discover the outside or the um, the home tile. And I'm going to put, uh, put someone working in there. You. Picking at random. And then, uh, once we have a little bit more people living in the village to fulfill these work roles, I'll also start collecting the yellow medicine. Oh! Uh, so this is a bit of a problem. Food for thought. Our tinkerers ask for additional resources to feed their creative flame. Those inspiring substances will surely lead us to many useful ideas. They demand... 
10 green medicine before the end of five days. So do we supply the tinkerers with med with 10 green medicine by day 25? Yes or no? The problem is I don't know where green medicine is yet. So if I do promise to provide it, it's going to be a little challenging. And denying it makes the tinkerer workers discontent. I don't know, and even if I did, I wouldn't share necessarily what happens if you promise it and don't don't supply it. And Scab Mechanic, thank you for the resub, and welcome. Now, it's also possible that I build some extra um, explorer platforms to really get my home tile explored to try to find green medicine very, very quickly. That's entirely possible. It does cost, let's say... 28 stone to do that but there is a benefit to doing it is that we would know more of the critical resources around our home well, it looks like we're going to deny the request so as a result of the denying the request if we take a look at the tinkerer here and the hermit because those are two tinkerer workers Uh, their discontent is up 20, but it does decrease. It is a temporary penalty, so it's not a big deal. Because, generally speaking, tribe-wide discontent is very low. Uh, I am going to also run a new journey. Where to journey? So our first journey was to the south. So I could go north, northeast, northwest, southeast, or southwest. And I'll give you one minute to vote on that. And then after a minute, I will set up another ex uh, group exploration. So we've got four crop fields running. And you can see, oh, never mind. All right, looks like we're going to be going north. I'm just going to call that one early. So, see no harm. We come across a strange wanderer. The man's body is decorated with long scars that seem to be depicting people. His mouth is stuck in an exhausted grimace, and there is a bloodied rag tied around his eyes. Travelers, again, spare something for a wretched fool? Please, very hungry, the man begs. With one hand, he opens his bag, while the other grips a black blade on his hip. Donate food to the man, which decreases her food by six. We have 13, and also decreases discontent by 15. Say nothing and back away, increases fear by 25, but uh, fear is zero. Or steal from the man. A 75% chance that we get 12 food. And a 25% chance that Fulrig Zorn Zornrar dies. So, feel free to vote in this one. And you can see the choices of past chapters here. So, for each chapter of exploration, you're offered another... Uh, sub-story, and it uncovers another area in the zone that you're exploring. Okay, we are donating food to the man. The man's grimace turns into a toothless smile. Thank you. Be careful out there. My family protects me, but you are not so lucky, he says, with glee and birds, and bids us farewell with a bow. As the strange man, as strange as the man was, it somehow feels good to have helped someone. 
Uh, we have enough resources and we don't have critical fear or discontent. I'm going to choose to go further. At some point, once things get a little bit more hairy, I'll have you guys vote for either turning back and gaining all the benefits of exploration or going forward with increased risk. But right now, there's not a lot of risk going forward. Ray Hermit, thank you for the resub. Cheers, dude. I sort to have someone named after you. Because we have the Hermit working in the Tinkery. Do you need resources for the return trip? You do not, no. So let's go ahead and start to uh, collect the yellow medicine. Which is here. I'm going to set up two collection points. And I will just assign random people to that. Two hunters, because we have a lot more food than we have wood. I just spent a whole lot of wood building that, so that, that therein lies the problem. Um, there is a little bit of a benefit, if you're wondering, in illuminating paths to work that is far. And the reason is, as soon as the night horn s signals, uh, the people that work in these places stop working immediately and return back to the light. But if you have them enveloped in the light of a beacon, provide that you have enough wood for them, uh, they will continue working until they need to fulfill their food or social or sleep needs or something like that. So for important uh, work facilities that are far away from the core of your village, that can be pretty useful. I'm also going to do a quick welfare check. Just checking on everyone's needs. So there's some low sleep needs, but it's late in the day, so that's going to be fulfilled. And there's some low spiritual needs. So even though our average spiritual numbers are pretty high, it's probably going to be worth running a, a spiritual lodge ritual. Uh, green meds have not been spotted yet. I would be zooming out. You would see a little uh, icon for it. So it's something we have not yet discovered. How is the game and what is it similar to? The game is a lot of fun and it's, uh, as I explained at the start of the stream, it's kind of a love child between Don't Starve and Frostpunk, despite how it looks. That is what I would liken it to most. So here's what I mean. Um, it is the night alarm just got sounded and my mushroom gatherers are returning, retreating to the light due to the night horn where they have not actually done a full harvest of anything because they were told to retreat. And in fact, one of them was left in the dark, albeit only for moments. The chance of being swallowed up by the dark is very low, but non-zero. So it's like 1% per hour or something like that, unless there's outside modifiers. So unfortunately, it seems like the people that uh, joined in this ritual were not the ones that really had critical spiritual needs. So I'm going to probably run another spirit lodge um, again now that it's nighttime. So that the people that actually have spiritual needs unmet uh, get that fulfilled. And let's go with another tent. allowing our population to go up. So as our population goes up, the key cohesion does go down. Um, but more people... People add more resources than they cost. If that makes sense. So the cost of adding people is offset by the production that they offer. Especially when there's modifiers. So like right now, there's crop farm modifiers of plus 30%, which is pretty nice. Uh, 
Uh, did I not start? Oh, so we you said north, right? I never started that journey. So let's go ahead and pick two very content and low fear people and head north. I feel like a nice balance is uh, two camps. You can have more, obviously, and you can have fewer. I think you probably should have at least one uh, explorer platform, or you're going to have a tough time. But, uh... But yeah, I would say two camps is pretty good. Should I spend wood and stone illuminating the yellow medicine? Yes or no? So if I did that, I would try to also illuminate this patch of trees in the process, if possible so that my timber workers could cut down this patch of trees at night as well, as like an added bonus, or at least some of it. And there should be, tiny spoiler, but there should be green mushrooms on my home tile. There definitely is, there always is. There's always stone, green and yellow mushrooms on your home tile. Um, but it shouldn't be too, too far out. The other thing is that Quahol here, who is exploring to the south, has a somewhat critical spiritual needs. So it might be worth having them turn back. And I'll remind you once I'm given the option. Because I'm just doing a, uh, a health check. Same with Full Rig. Full Rig is, I'm assuming, her partner here. Yes. So they both have um, spiritual needs unmet. So unless the next chapter offers a way to gain spiritual needs, um, that is something to consider. Because their needs are not being met while they're deployed. So usually shorter deployments are safer unless you get lucky with ways to fulfill spiritual and social needs while you're out. It looks like we are going to spend stone illuminating that path. Ooh, here we go. Another choice. A sinister thirst. One of our woodcutters drops their axe in stunned silence. The split up a bark of the tree has revealed a shape that looks like an eye. Underneath the shape, the trunk is smeared with dried blood. Everyone seems uncomfortable under the eye's stare, but disagree on what should be done. Some wish to give the tree what it wants, while others tell us to cut it down. I can sacrifice blood to the forest, which increases tribe member fear, I'm not sure whether this is permanent or temporary, but increases tribe member fear by 30 and increases the lumber camp tree growth by 30. Helps trees regrow, but people get very scared. Or your tribe gets corrupted firewood for 10 days. The firewood burning has a doubled cost, but spiritual progress per wood burned in the fire is increased. So essentially, Firewood burnt will increase our spiritual progress. So do we sacrifice blood to the forest or chop the tree into firewood? If we chop the tree into firewood, I'm probably going to have to shift some workforce away from hunting into a lot more tree cutting uh, to make sure that we can afford to burn those fires. And I might delay the construction of the beacons to illuminate the yellow medicine because I don't need beacons drying on our wood supply as well. Meaning that the last pole will have to get delayed by 10 days because we'll have corrupted firewood. So 
So let's wrap this pole up. It's currently tied. Because of course it is. All right, we're going to go with, ooh, I see it. It's truly tied now. I'm going to go with a coin flip. That's scary. All right, heads is we sacrifice blood to the forest. I have a coin here. And tails is we chop it up. Tails. Chop up the tree into firewood. So here at our fire... The, f the cost is now six an hour. Um, I am going to be making sure that our lumber camps are fully staffed, moving any hunters from hunting rolls into tree cutting rolls. And it looks like that's already the case. So then what I'm going to do is create some new lumber camps out here. and move hunters into these lumber camps to make sure that we can afford oh our tinkerer is hunting I should fix that no uh, I might need to save and load it says the tinkerer is at the hunters hall hunting but he should be tinkering Let me check on the tribe members tab. Yeah, maybe this is a bug, I think. Yeah, it says the tinkerer is at the hunter's hall hunting. Uh, let's try to find which one it is. That one? I'll shut it down. And what I could do is I can switch them out and switch them back. And hopefully that will work. Okay, right. that seemed to have worked. Moving more of my hunters from hunting rolls to woodcutting rolls. Because our, our uh, lumber costs have just gone up a lot. So we have to be careful what we build now. Because our wood cost is just much, much higher. Spiritual need. Do a quick, quick spiritual check. Most people are okay spiritually, except for those out on a journey. So these, this number is two which is a pretty good indicator that it's high. I think what I'm going to do is uh, build some additional lumber camps up here and move even more hunters into lumber rolls because we have farmers providing a lot of the food now and there's um, big modifiers for increased farming productivity. So there is less of a need to be hunting as a result because farming is now a more efficient source of food at the moment. And each chapter will have different modifiers, so that won't always be true, which is why I haven't broken down the hunters, uh, the hunting halls, because next chapter, it could just be as easy as like, hey, all your farms no longer have bonuses. They have negatives instead. Um, so you better rely on hunting now. So if nighttime is, let's say, nine hours, and it's six per hour, we have pretty high f uh, wood needs now. You know, we need like 54-ish, let's say, lumber um, stockpiled to last us the night, which is way up from like the 24 before. The good news is, wood burned 
is now increasing our spiritual progress. So as you can see here, we're getting some spiritual progress of both servants of the shepherd and disciples of the beast. So that uh, we can unlock some spiritual modifiers with the spiritual wood that we're burning from that blood tree. Are both tinkerers working now? Uh, yes, they are. I mean, they're sleeping, but yeah, hypothetically. Let's look at uh, any traits. No, there's only two people with traits. I'm going to go for a yellow ritual. So with this, I right now have the slider set at 100% uh, of our yellow medicine is reserved for ritual. And you can change the slider to daily consumption for productivity or stored for ritual. And maybe at some point I'll pull for where that slider should lie. But what's going to happen is if six people, at least six people attend this ritual, each tribe member will consume one medicine per ritual, which translates to one spiritual progress point. So if six people attend, which, yeah, I can see that more than six are coming, they will consume all of my yellow medicine, and I will gain six extra bonus points towards Servants of the Shepherd. Now, the only thing I have to be... The only risky thing about this right now is that my some of my uh, lumberjacks are going to be attending this ritual and not cutting down trees. But if I lose wood and the fire goes out during the day, it's far less impactful than if it goes out at night. At night, it's very, very deadly. I'm actually going to shut down my hunter's halls to force people into non-hunter hall work. And I might want to do a save and reload because it looks like there's a weirdness with the tinkerer uh, working in two places at once. So I'm going to do that. Reminds me of a Stellaris bug, where you have your leaders that can become like a general and a researcher at the same time, and it's weird. Wow, we are not a fearful group at all. Our fear is like sitting at near zero for most people. I feel like some people just disappeared. Okay, so here we go. Uh, no picky eaters. So I believe these are the people that I was considering for turning around because their spiritual needs are getting to a critical moment. But there is a choice here. We've come across a, ha uh, come across a half eaten animal carcass with its innards spread wide open. There's plenty of meat on it, but who knows how long it's been there. It really does not look that appetizing but something about the smell of blood keeps pulling us closer. We can eat from the carcass, so it's a 50% chance that our food needs are satisfied and we gain food. We can leave it, which increases discontent, uh, and our discontent is sitting at 41, or we could ignore the temptation and nothing happens. Uh, eating from the carcass also has a 50% chance to increase travel time to the next sector by 200%. Keeping in mind that we were considering having them turn back anyway, so maybe it's not a big deal. So, 30 seconds on that pole. It's also worth noting that um, these explorers had been uh, got, got sent out 
during the eclipse and they no longer have the fear from the eclipse. All right, looks like we are ignoring temptation. Should we turn back? Yes or no? So they've uncovered three areas. I don't know what areas they will be until they return home. We can go further to continue the way forward with three food and 12 wood. So you can see that like it's not perfect because of random events that will happen, but generally speaking, four stacks of wood and two stacks of food are, uh, uh, you know, if we eat, especially if we ate that carcass, you know, our food and wood would balance out more or less. So that's kind of the balance that I find that is worth striking. But we are going to be turning back. And it will take them a little bit of time to turn back. But the reason that I wanted them to turn back is this. So it's this explorer and this explorer. And their spiritual needs are at fever pitch. Their sleep needs, their social needs, they're very, very bad right now. So because they've been apart from our group, um, it's been a, a hard on them. Uh, so the ritual just wrapped up for yellow medicine. And if we take a look at the spiritual aspects, the yellow is now six points ahead of the green because we spent those six um, yellow medicine to, well, it's actually more than that, but I think we harvested yellow medicine in the process. So it, it, it got a little bit of a boost because um, it's eight points ahead. So my guess is one of our um, medicine makers like just cashed in some medicine during it. But yeah, there you go. We also have enough um, research points to get improved tools, but we don't have the wood because of the corrupt firewood. If you're wondering, there is really not, other than buying the lumber camp production time, which maybe we do to offset the wood. So I'll ask that. Do we instead increase wood production as research? Right now, there isn't any research that I would consider getting, not even the lumber camp, because our A, we would need one more wood, but B, um, our fire would go out. So it'd be not nice to have a buffering amount of wood before uh, researching that. But I'll give you a minute to vote in whether we shift our research um, strategy. I cannot believe I have not found green medicine yet, though. Of the, like, I don't know. I did, like, ten playthroughs and only, like, two or three all the way to the end of the game. I've never... It's never taken this long. Well, that's just how it is sometimes. So one person is delirious, but... That's just a lack of sleep. They'll get sleep soon. It was probably as a result of running the Spirit Lodge. And um, they were dancing instead of sleeping. Because it can have that effect. So I had mentioned that um, I am going to move the Nighthorn Clock up one hour. Just so that we can get a little bit more wood. Because our wood is not safely within the 54 that I need to stockpile for the night. I might even move it up two hours. Um, to make sure we have enough wood to last night. But it would be great to try to stockpile wood tomorrow so that we can unlo unlock the, uh, the lumber camp. Because it looks like you want me to. And if you're wondering, uh, the unlocks are instant. The minute you click it, you get the bonus. So there isn't like a research time. The research time is essentially building up the research points. All right, we're pretty good on wood. So I'm going to um, set the alarm clock to nine rather than 10. Not to chance it too much. Dead cold, thank you for the resub. So two tribe members are in the dark. Greg Gregor, 
is now the only one in the dark. And they were just at the Yellow Medicine Farm. This is a little bit further from the hub. Okay, our wood lasted, so I'm going to get lumber camp. And that should tremendously help offsetting the corrupted uh, firewood that we have here. I mean, if you're crazy, you could also ramp up the amount of fire, that, the wood that you burn, to get more spiritual progress, but that would be, in my opinion, kind of suicidal. So now these lumber camps, if I mouse over them... Oh, well, I'll do that in a minute. Uh, Sanctuary of Light. We see rain clouds gathering above us and begin looking for shelter. A strange light is coming from under a nearby cliffside. There we find a circle of gigantic glowing mushrooms, big enough to fit the entire uh, journey inside. So I can sleep inside the circle. Sleep needs are satisfied and discontent goes down at 65% chance or a 35% chance of an increase of fear by 25. Uh, right now, fear is zero and discontent is 23. Or continue onwards. Sleep needs are worsened and discontent goes up. Oh, there you go. Do we sleep inside the giant glowing mushroom circle for a chance for a uh, reduction to discontent? but at risk of fear, and yes, overwhelmingly you guys say yes. And that's what we got, we got lucky. The light of the mushroom seemed to wrap us in a comforting warmth. We quickly fall into a peaceful, restful sleep. Upon waking, we find ourselves even braver than before. It is as if the world had, for a little while, become a more welcoming place. Um, all right. So they have only discovered one area. I don't think that their uh, social or societal needs are critical, so I'm going to go forward. But I should check on them anyway. I wish I could have during. So this is um, Peyrora and Peyrig. No, their spiritual needs... Peyrig spiritual needs... Are, well, we should probably turn back soon, but they're not red critical. And where's Perora? It gets a bit to manage, doesn't it? Oh, are they at the top? Oh yeah, they're at the top. Uh, no, I didn't uh, pay Rig. Pay Rig is 12.5 and Perora is 12.5. Okay, they're fine. But... It's their spiritual needs are not being met, so it, there is a consideration to be made there. So nine in the morning, and we ought to get a pretty good amount of wood now, um, because the lumber camp here has a productivity of 10% due to the stability of chapter two and a production time um, for cutting down those trees, I think, uh, of minus 50%. So it is quicker to cut down the trees and then we have to saw that and bring it to the stockpile. But that should aid us in producing a lot more wood than we were before. I would like to get the wood somewhere in the 160 range, 170 range or so, before considering getting improved tools. Because improved tools cost 90 wood. I can afford it right now, but it we do not want to black out in the middle of the night. That would be catastrophic. Still no green mushrooms. All right, do a quick 
Uh, check on everyone. The spiritual needs for our two explorers are critically bad, as are some of their other stats. Social is critically bad. But everyone else seems to be okay. And I can't manage the needs because they're away from camp. It makes it very costly to have prolonged explorations as a result. But they ought to be back soon. Okay, we do have some unassigned tribe members. That's my fault. As our population was growing, I was not actually giving them places to work. So because wood is such a critical resource, I'm, uh, I'm building more lumber camps. Thank you for tuning in to The Tribe Must Survive, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 22nd. If you have any questions or feedback for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that I've asked for no spoilers or backseating. It is important that the viewers do not have this game spoiled for them. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch you in next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow tribe members.